Happy, happy Wednesday, everyone. How are we doing? Well, if you are watching live right now, you'd be like, I just saw you recently, Miles. You were just doing a VR Let's Play. Today is remarkably action-packed um, because as I speak right now, uh, PSVR Without Pro is finishing off Gamescast Live uh, because, um, and, and for those that don't know, Gamescast Live is a show that's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I am the co-host uh, on Fridays because PSVR 2 is launching um, an amazing game. I can say it now pretty much because we've been given permission to talk about it a bit before uh, the reviews all go out uh, in a couple of hours from now. Um, and uh, yeah, um, it comes out tomorrow. And so um, they're talking about it on the show now. Um, and then they'll be putting a review up afterwards. And then in two hours from now, uh, 11 p.m. Uh, UK time on this channel, I will be hosting a VR Let's Play on there. Uh, and I will be joined by one of the devs uh, who's based in South... They're, they're all based in South Korea. Um, BJ, he's called, and really cool guy. And I can't wait uh, for you uh, seeing it because um, this game, I, I think even just think some of the stuff you can do on it is pretty awesome. And it really shows you like why VR gaming, we use this term VRAF, virtual reality, reality as, um, yeah, um, it, it really does show that. So um, yeah, looking forward to it. Um, which meant um, there was another game. There's a lot of games coming out this week. They've just all come out of nowhere. And I've kind of been playing catch up as well because I normally let's play VR games every week. Um, I, I don't always want to repeat this every week, but it's been a rubbish start of the year for me. Been doing a lot of stuff with my personal life. So I'm sort of playing catch up with that now. And so there was a, another VR game I played earlier today. And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to treat myself ordered a nice deep pan pizza from Pizza Hut, went to pick it up so I could enjoy it while prepping for today's show and watching Gamescast live. And uh, normally I would eat like half of it and save the other half for later. I ate all of it. I don't know what's going on. I've been eating really healthy lately and been doing my intermittent fasting, eating once at midday, eating another seven, eight hours later having a lot of uh, ch chicken Caesar salads, which I'm now cooking myself. Normally I'd go to Tesco's and get it. I now prepare it all fresh myself. And that's been a wonderful experience for me this week. You know, the, we, we talked about this in the past, about the joys of cooking. There's something about, you know, preparing something yourself and then getting to enjoy it. And it is just 100%, you know, better when you make it because you can do all the tweaks that you want. Um, and so, yeah, that was really, really wonderful. But I'm now hoping... I'm not going to pass out with a food coma having eaten a, a whole deep pan pizza for myself. But my goodness, it was good. And Games with Tea just said, well done, Miles. I'm proud of you for eating an entire pizza. 
I mean, I don't know if my heart's proud, uh, but we'd have to wait and see. Um, but uh, yeah, I just want to say hello to everyone in the chat who is here live. But if you're watching on replay, I love you too. Hello to you. Uh, let me know if you do watch on repeat uh, Repeat in, in the comments below. We've got Mojo. Uh, we've got Chris. We've got Siago. Um, <laughs> Siago goes, people order pizza and don't eat it all in one go. I should really have a sound effect for a <gasps> or a scream. <gasps> What? What? Yeah. Um, Cali Time Cat, good to see you here. Um, Clem Fandango, um, who says, I have to save Gamescast for Friday when I drive to Oxford. Then on Sunday night, I listen to Friday's Gamecast on the drive home. That's good, though. That's the good thing about these shows is you can save them. There's a lot of... Um, I, I do pay for YouTube Premium. And I, I think when you stop using it, you really notice how many ads there are. But one of the cool features is you get to download directly onto your phone, you know, shows and that, just so that when you're out and about, you're not having to use, you know, data, which actually probably in many ways saves you if you're someone that does a lot of commuting and stuff like that. Um, Kelly Timecat says, hello, Miles. Happy Wednesday, day, everyone. Uh, good to see you indeed. Um, yeah. And Kira Cat Lady, good to see you here. Thank you once again. All the wonderful stuff you've been doing with uh, the VR, doing all the timestamps and that's um, been amazing. And uh, David, VR, good to see you here. Everyone, just welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And so I was trying to work out what to talk about for this week because every week it's just like, what, what should the topic be? And so something I did was I took out a calendar. I went on one of these websites where it tells you, you know, what are all the sort of international, national days of the year? So, you know, like International Pancake Day or International Don't Hit Your Elbow Day. Uh, there probably is one, but I can say I just made that up. Um, and always a pleasure, Kira. Uh, that's what I uh, adore you for it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, Mojo says, I love YouTube Premium that you can... <laughs> this is this is actually kind of depressing, that you can play in the background to listen to it so it's worth the money. I mean, that is a feature that is doable, but YouTube have decided to put that behind a paywall is very sneaky. Uh, but I agree with you. Being able to lock videos and then listen to them uh, is is excellent for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I was I was looking down this list and I actually mistakenly put down something that I thought was today, but it was actually yesterday. And then when I was coming up with today's show, I thought, you know what? Just because it happened yesterday doesn't mean. I mean. These are national days or international days of bringing awareness to things, but it doesn't necessarily mean talk about it on that day and then don't bother, you know, otherwise the international things wouldn't be having an impact, right? The whole point is you have a day to bring attention and then the rippling effect afterwards is that the conversation continues. Um, and so, yeah, um, yesterday uh, was um, Safe uh, Internet Day, which I was unaware of. Um, and uh, they say the 2024 edition of Safer Internet Day took place on Tuesday, the 6th of February, 2024. This special celebration, which takes place in February of each year, aims to raise awareness of a safer and better internet for all, and especially for children and young people. As part of the celebration, we encourage everyone, including children and young people, parents and caregivers, teachers and educators, policymakers, industry and others, to join together for a better internet. Um, and... For those that don't know, I have um, uh, worked on a lot of digital citizenship campaigns. I've worked with counter extremist organisations. I've worked with Google. I've taught in schools. Um, but the reality is that um, a lot of these are helpful reminders we could all do with from time to time. Getting our digital hygiene, um, you know, digital well-being up to scratch. And so what I thought was uh, off the back of this that today we could talk about um, 10 tips that I've put together uh, of how to be safer online. Now, when you look at like titling, and when I was trying to come up with the title of the video, a lot of the videos out there, and Kira is absolutely right, we are young at heart. Absolutely, absolutely agree. Um, it's my birthday in, uh, when is it? What's the day today? It's Wednesday in like 10 days' time. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm not going to feel so young then. Um, and Ash Wednesday is next week, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. So much, so much, so much. Um, but uh, 
yeah, a lot of videos are called like 10, the top 10 tips to be safe online. And there's two issues I have with that. One is, I, by the way, I know why they're titled that way because that's what people are going to be searching for. But top, I'm always like, are they the top? No, I like to just say, look, these are 10 tips. They might not be the top 10, but they're decent ones. And then safe online, I feel is sounds definitive. And again, I don't want to misguide. This is not about absolution. This isn't like if you do these 10 things, you're safe online. You're safer. And that's not to scare people, but it's just to say it's all about risk mitigation. Um, I, I learned a lot when I did work in cybersecurity about the difference between threat and risk. So the way I heard it explained best, and I'm probably going to get this wrong, is if you lived in your house and you left the front door open all the time, whether you were at home or not, that is not a threat. That is a risk. The risk is that the door is open at all times or if you leave the windows open at all times. That's a risk. The threat is there are people that are willing to commit crimes. And so what you're doing with cyber security when we go through these 10 tips is you aren't removing the threat, but you are reducing the risk. And that's what it comes down to. So, um, yeah, that, that's how I'm going to explain it. But before we get onto these 10 things, and by the way, it's not just about the 10 tips that I have. We're going to discuss them together. And if you have any of your own tips, would love to hear them as well. No one has a monopoly on good ideas. I believe that through and through with everything. And this is always good when it's a discussion. So um, with that said, and also keeping in mind that because of uh, me having to get set up for this uh, Let's Play um this actually the show won't be that much shorter than normal um but um i'm really excited to go through this topic so um yeah a lot of people are agreeing with that analogy and saying uh siago says good rule of thumb in general but kind of applies double online if it sounds too good to be true it probably isn't true that's absolutely the case um so uh yeah um but we do. We always do a bit of housekeeping, uh, and so there's a couple of things. Um, I don't know if you like the song that we played on the intro. I absolutely love it. Tut Tut Child. When it kicks in with that music, it just reminds me of like classic Mega Drive games. Uh, it was Tut Tut Child featuring Beth Cole, If I Could. And I just love it. It's just a feel-good track. Um, so if you like it, check it out. It's been added to the Spotify playlist, Miles Die Alive. Uh, you can either search Miles Die Alive on Spotify or scan that QR code um, and just click the like button on it and you'll be updated because every week that I add new music for the intros, um, there's actually another song I was going to play today, um, which probably will happen next week. But it's been added there as well. It's called Cloud, or it's by Cloud Nun and LEV, and it's called Let the Music In. I shared it on my Instagram story. Absolutely, absolutely love it. Um, right, um, but other bits of housekeeping we do. Um, vitamin G. We take a moment every week just to think about what we're grateful for. Vitamin G meaning gratitude. Um, and this is something that I invite everyone to share in the chat, but you don't have to share it. Um, just thinking about it to yourself is actually a really good thing for your mental health and well-being uh, when I put my head on the pillow at night I always like to think about like three things I'm grateful for that day and it just fills you with positivity and it just makes you feel a lot better so um, I highly recommend it there um, so yeah vitamin G um, I invite you all um, I'm going to go first while you're all thinking and typing your ideas um, this week I um well, I mean, I'll start with the vitamin G. I, I, I am, I am very grateful to live a life with such amazing people. Um, and this week, I had a really deep conversation with someone I've become, I'd like to think, decent friends with recently. Um, and we had a conversation at the weekend, and they were talking about how they'd become a lot more positive about life and everything going on. But they sort of like balanced that off with the fact that not too long ago they weren't feeling good about life in a really bad way. And uh, I couldn't stop thinking about it. Couldn't stop thinking about it. And it just, it's never nice when you hear anyone going through that. But um, in this circumstance, it was like someone that I think the world of, and I think it's absolutely incredible, 
and it's just like someone with such positive energy and brings so much joy to people and you know things like that um can feel feel that way um it just um i i i it was that thing of like wanting to reach out but not feeling like sometimes you can you, you worry you're going to do more harm than good like if someone shared something they don't want you, you got to be careful how you coordinate it and obviously as a mental health first aider now um, i'm a lot more cognizant of it than i was already but um i just reached out to them and i just said hey um it's really good that you're in a better place now but because of what you said you felt before i just want to say that if you ever having episodes like that again you can always message me anytime any place um and, and and that was it and uh didn't hear from them for uh, 24 hours and it felt like a long 24 hours because i thought oh did i over push it and then they got back to me and said really really appreciate that um same 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 with me as in like they're there for me and it just made me grateful for friendships connections and it also made me cognizant of the fact that you know sometimes you know we p people have to be very brave to deal with their own mental health issues and so sometimes you can feel uncomfortable reaching out to them and like you know being you know there's been a supportive friend but then there's acknowledging it directly and saying hey i care about you and i'm always here for you um but just going over that bit of uncomfort can be um can be life-changing so really really um feel grateful for just connection and you know living at a time where we, we get to be there for other people so that was my vitamin g it was a bit of a long one but it was something that's been playing on my mind a lot this week um right um silver nexus says grateful for a streamer just like you full marks that is the that is the correct answer that is the correct answer silver nexus no thank you very much really really appreciate that dude um very very kind um uh uh Kal uh Kal Kalin kalinka i'm saying cali but kalinka fitmaji two lovely people on threads clint and safi both post lots of great content for lgbt history month which is happening right now is it also black history month this month as well do they do they go hand in hand um i could have got that wrong but no that's that's awesome that's awesome kelly uh kira says uh vitamin g uh, and this is it you, you get the vitamin g icon which you can't see there but you get this if you uh if you're a member uh for uh vitamin g kira says for more opportunities to do useful things for others uh and be a safe person that's wonderful opportunity the power of opportunity always really really good uh and callie's callie's always winging in those extra vitamin g's and you know what fair play because as i said the more you can acknowledge and be grateful for, the better. Uh, vitamin G February for being 29 days long because of Leap Day. I always like Leap Day. Wish it happened more often. Yeah, it's every four years, right? Every four years. Um, Siago says, not to piggyback, but also kind of piggybacking. Piggybacking's good. That's like conversation. I love it. Vitamin G that I haven't been in that kind of headspace for a long time. Not that I don't have good and bad days, but they're at lesser extremes nowadays that's awesome super happy for you because it is kind of like a pendulum like if you pull it one way and then it goes further the other way it's like you know those bigger swings you just want a bit more like a bit of movement a bit of stability you need a little bit of movement because if you don't you'd never feel the good because you never felt the bad if we were like dead in the middle the whole time you wouldn't feel anything um so yeah mojo says uh vitamin g for a roof over my head a comfy bed and my family to help me recover and fight off the nova virus that was kicking my ass i'm sorry to hear that you've had that mojo and i hope um you're feeling a lot better now uh david vr says uh vitamin g grateful for good health king charles cancer diagnosis was a shock for those that don't know our new king uh, had a cancer diagnosis but i believe it was caught very early and being the king it, although this is no guarantee uh being the king uh will be getting the best health uh care possible but it has you know this seems like a weird thing to say but it is just a mainstream conversation about are people royalists and that it's not really the conversation um 
to have a human being having cancer terrible but what i would say is i do think it's actually i'd rather they he didn't get cancer but i do think that the fact that the news and the media is talking about it a lot means it's just sharing a lot of awareness about it and it's making a lot of maybe older men although it's you know not exclusive to older men um will will go out and get checked because um uh, I think it was prostate cancer, wasn't it? Which is a, a really, really bad cancer. Um, yeah. Um, okay. All right, everyone. Well, thank you, thank you. And Silver Nexus just there. Um, and very, very, very kind. Very affordable membership. Please support Miles for the support he provides us all. Only, only what you can afford. Um, some people prefer doing Super Chat. Some people prefer doing Patreon. Um, but yeah, for the cost of less than a coffee a month, uh, you can click that join button, unlock some emojis um and yeah always always appreciate the support uh right so it's black history month in america and october is oh, okay there we go they're swap seas okay got it got it got it got it uh right thank you everyone and uh hey king rilo oh sorry try not to yawn um next thing uh dire discoveries dire discoveries i um had a a good conversation with an ex colleague yesterday. Um, I've been doing a lot of job hunting in the background, and uh, I've got a couple of opportunities. I'm just finalising something at the moment, um, so I've got some work to keep me going in the meantime. That I could talk about now, but I'll probably save it till next week because I'm just finalising details. We're, we're pretty much working together, but as a freelancer, I'm just nailing down my work hours and the fee uh, because the last time I ever did freelance, it ended really badly. Uh, and it was with someone I'd known for many, many years, and uh, it left a sour taste in my mouth, and uh, actually put me off doing freelance, which is what pushed me into um, full time. So I'm, you know, just taking all the extra steps to protect myself, even when they're people that I adore and stuff like that. You know, when it comes to money, you always got to take care of yourself. And as Clem Fandango says quite rightly, hit the like button. And I, I know it's quite quiet on stream right now because Gamescast is is on. Uh, as as we're doing this which is fine um very popular show they've got like they had 600 when i left really really good audience um so anyway um i was speaking to an ex-colleague and we were just talking about life philosophies and i talked about a lot about um how i dealt with losing my job and always making the positive case and always just trying not to be angry and um sorry my um my ex-colleague uh, recommended a book to me and so I ordered it straight away and got it the next day um, and it's called Lessons in Stoicism there's actually a hardback cover that has a really colourful design but it's by John Sellers Excellency shows why Stoicism is the philosophy for our time what ancient philosophers teach us about how to live and the thing about Stoicism uh, is I never knew what it meant and it's the endurance of pain or hardship without the display of feelings and without complaint. Uh, it also says an ancient Greek school of philosophy founded at Athens by Zeno of Citium. The school taught that virtue, the highest good, is based on knowledge. The wise live in harmony with the divine. Reason, uh, also identified with fate and providence, that governs nature and are indifferent to the vicissitudes vicissitudes of fortune and to pleasure and pain but um it's a small book small small book but um goes through chapters like life and death well let's have a look at all the chapters here that's what i like about this camera i can hold it up so the philosopher as doctor what do you control the pl problem with emotions dealing with adversity our place in nature life and death how we live together um so i'm really um looking forward to this and uh chris riley says you know same as buddhism um but yeah so i just got that and i'm i'm looking forward to having a read i've not read it yet so i can't give a hard recommendation but it was recommended it was a hard recommendation to me and i'm, I'm very much looking forward to reading it a, a nice bedtime book and i will forever love the fact that when i hold up these things and i've got this little me here <laughs> It's so ridiculous. Anyway, um, 
let's crack on with the main topic of the show. So, oh, oh, sorry. One last thing in the background. Um, it's been pinned in the live chat, uh, but this is this week's puzzle. Uh, so in the background, uh, if you go to that link, uh, you can play along in this game. And basically, you click a piece. Um, oh, that's why it never lets me click it, because I have to change the size just so I can do that. Um, but yeah, you click a piece, click another, and it swaps them around. And uh, oh, someone has started, obviously, with live. And uh, if you swap it and it flashes green, it means it's the right place. If it flashes red, it means it was in the right place, but no more. This could be a difficult one, but um, some people like to, you know, be busy with stuff in the background. There was a lot of other games that I was thinking about playing on the show today, but I need to do some tech tests with them. Um, so there'll be a bit of that. Um, Kira says, um, I'm reading The Little Book of Stoicism by Jonas Salzberger on and off. Very eye-opening short chapters. That's awesome. I think it's good that they're short chapters as well for that kind of topic. Um, but anyway, yeah. So talking about um, Safer Internet Day. Uh, I love that little uh, happy little uh, iPad or whatever it's meant to be. Um, and so, yeah, I have, I, I don't actually have any slides or anything. I have put together, I've had loads of caffeine. I'm surprised I can't stop yawning. I've put together a list of 10 uh, tips I have for being safer online. Uh, and so as I go through them all, um, it'd be good to hear your thoughts on them. And some of these things, I, I always call these helpful reminders. You know, um, the best kind of knowledge are like jigsaw pieces that, you know, fit on to existing knowledge that click on. Because if it's too new and detached, you got to kind of bring your, your, your mind towards it. So helpful reminders are the best. If your brain is a jigsaw puzzle, maybe it's replacing a jigsaw piece with one that is actually newer, fresher, updated. Um, and everyone's saying, don't forget to smash the like button. Uh, it's, and it definitely, yeah, it probably is all that pizza dough. That's probably not helped it, uh, at all. So the first thing on my list I've got is what I call webcam hygiene. Now, I wonder if any of you can think what I'm going to talk about when it comes to webcams. Because when it come, comes down to being safe online, why why webcams why webcams and there are two things i'm gonna say about this firstly um a lot of laptops these days is um a lot of uh, laptops these days have webcams built into them with no cover or anything they're always looking at you um and the reality is webcams can be accessed by nefarious people out there sometimes um, you might leave a webcam on. Um, I'll never forget mm, 15 years ago when I used to use stickam.com. Uh, there was a friend of mine who um, was left their webcam on. Everyone was on webcam. They went to go change their top. And uh, yeah, they left the camera on and they were very embarrassed by it. It was no big deal. But um, that was probably one of my first memories of like seeing something happen like that. Um, I have an amusing story about leaving a webcam on, which I might say for another time. Um, but it's also, you know, um, uh, about nefarious people like NSA uh, documents from Edward Snowden showed that, um, you know, spy agencies do have the ability to access webcams and microphones without them even appearing to be turned on. Um, so um, my first thing is when it comes to webcams, is get a simple slide over gadget uh, so no one can access your webcam without your consent. I mean, they could access the webcam, but they're not gonna see anything because something is physically blocking it. Um, so <laughs> Mojo is saying, tell us, tell us. Um, I might tell it at the end if I've got time. If not, I could probably save it for another episode as a, as a whole topic. Um, but yeah. You can, you can get them really cheap online. Um, I'm sure there are some probably organizations that give them for free. Funnily enough, I don't actually have one for this laptop, so I, sh so I, I should get it. Um, I had it for my old laptop, and I even used to have it for my phone, but again, um, I don't have it there now. 
I'm trying to think. Um, have I got... Oh, here it is. Mm, 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 mm. There we go. Good. It's a dirty... But there you go. Let's look at that. How? Oh, <laughs> accidentally pressed a button. Uh, really t uh, messy. Uh, <laughs> but uh, there it is. And it just slides across. So there's the webcam. And then you slide it. That is a gross looking screen. I've not used that in a while. That's my work one. It's because well, that's the only problem with these keyboards. You have these nice screens. You'll see you use a keyboard with your fingers that have grease and fingerprints on it. And so when you close it naturally, it adds it all onto it. So um, I'm being asked, are MacBooks more secure with that stuff? Yeah, uh, possibly more, more secure, not 100% secure. And it's why I mentioned at the start about, you know, it's about reducing risk. It's about becoming safer. There's no absolute. So it's about just mitigating risk. Um, and it's just peace of mind. And as I said, it's not just about nefarious people. It's about accidentally leaving it on um, and things like that. So, um, yeah. And considering smart TVs are usually in your living room and house uh, or in your bedroom, that's kind of weird. Yeah, well, there's that as well. Ex exactly. Um, so, yeah, webcam caps. Um, but there's another part to webcams uh, that I would recommend. And like right now I'm using a, an actual camera. But if you have a webcam and things, always ensure that you position your webcam properly so there is no accidental sharing of personal spaces or information. If you live with people, you know, is there a doorway where they could be walking past? Like um, there's a door here and there's the bathroom. And if I lived with someone and the door was open and let's say it was in the morning, they were having a shower and they didn't want to be seen on camera. That's something you have to be wary of. Um, when I did my VR live streams, there's something called pass-through mode, which is where the webcam, uh, the um, the headset allows me using the cameras on the headset to look in the room around. PlayStation have added a feature now, so when I'm live streaming, it won't show that. I don't really have an issue with it, but at first I had to always make sure that I had no letters lying on tables and stuff because it meant on the live broadcast, I'd be sharing my address. But other things were the doorway out of my living room goes to the hallway and the front door. Now, this might sound hyper sensitive, but I think in today's day and age, especially with AI on the rise, you can never not be too careful. But I never wanted people to see what my front door looked like because then that can be an identifying factor of where you live. Um, and so um, I would say position your camera in a way that's just mindful. In this background, everything here is a set. Everything here can be viewed. I do have some letters in that round here and arguably probably should have them hidden away because if I knock the camera and it shows, it just takes one frame. And obviously not everyone's a live broadcaster. But another example is if you're on a work call, here I have a whiteboard with my calendar a um, couple of problems that could be there I mean I'm looking at it right now there's no personal details on there but let's say I was on vacation at some point and people saw it you never know who's who who, who, who could be finding out information uh, and knowing when you're not going to be home and things like that so always make sure your camera is pointing somewhere where there's no sensitive information in the background because people can learn a lot about you a lot of people can look at your background and maybe learn about your hobbies or things like that. And that can obviously have an impact in other circumstances. People can build a profile about you. And again, it's not about being overly paranoid. It's just about reducing risk, you know, and especially unnecessary risk. If you're talking with a family member, then of course it's different. You can have a chat and you can walk around the house and stuff like that. Uh, Chris says, if Miles gets kidnapped, we know why. Um, okay, so that was point number one, webcam hygiene. Get a cover if you can and just always be mindful of where it's pointing if you're on a work call, you know, if you're talking to people you don't know and things like that. But if you have it like a fixed camera like I've got now or a laptop positioning, it means you don't have to think about it each time. It's just, it's fine. 
Um, Callie says, isn't there a super sleuth who challenges people to send them a photo from anywhere outside and they can pinpoint exactly where and the where they are? Quite possibly. Uh, <laughs> Clem says, I've learned that Miles likes Spider-Man and stop signs. <laughs> there we go. Um, I'm assuming that VR uses blurring or similar methods to combat online safety. So it, it has something built in now so it won't broadcast it. It won't do it through the social screen. Ah, oh, is that why? Hmm. Is that why it's not on the TV anymore? I have to think about that. Anyway, number two. Th these aren't in any particular order. Um, number two, uh, secure websites. Does everyone know here, when you're looking at a URL of a website, what, what will tell you if it's secure? Does anyone know this? This is something I taught when I taught at schools about um digital citizenship um does anyone know basically at the top end of a url you have http but you want https the s is important and the s is important because um it means secure and again it doesn't mean absolute but it does mean secure uh websites with https obviously colon forward slash forward slash encrypt data sent from your browser to the website protecting it from interception this encryption is crucial for any site where you enter personal or financial information so always be mindful when you're looking uh for secure websites secure websites everywhere everyone's been getting it good this is good this is good um i know when i first heard about this it was something i was like i'm pretty sure i knew that but like thinking about it explicitly and null zero says the lock icon that is something else uh, on some browsers um you can see that as well um very very important um so yeah the lock isn't always going to be there i think it's on some browsers um but yeah uh, that can also also indicate it but https is a good start um, it doesn't necessarily mean a, a website is safe. Like scammers can use a website that's HTTPS. Um, so yeah. Um, right, number three, strong passwords, okay? There is a lot of discussion in the cybersecurity space about how to, what what is good password practice. Changing your password on a regular basis doesn't actually do a lot because if you're if you keep changing your password on a regular basis you're more likely to forget it and you're more likely to choose easier shorter passwords because you're like oh, you know i need something that's going to be easy to remember because i keep thinking of the previous one it's not to say that changing passwords is a bad thing it's not but that isn't what's going to help you be secure. Um, so there's something that we talk about in the industry called pass phrases. So instead of coming up with like a word and then a load of numbers at the end and characters, exclamation mark, and then I don't know, something else at the end. Pass phrases is the idea that you come up with like a sentence. And what you might do is um, you have a pass phrase like, um, let me see if I can find some art examples online do you know what if uh let's see if cybersafe this is uh the the company i worked for cybersafe creating a passphrase um have they got it here ah i thought they actually um gave you here we go no here we go strong passwords passphrases should be used for all accounts containing sensitive data such as workplace accounts payment related sites primary personal email and even social media accounts passwords that are over 12 characters long 
don't contain personal information, e.g. names, birthdays, and places, or are created by password managers and don't appear on have I been pwned? Passwords lists are the most secure options. You can also create a strong and memorable passphrase using the three random words technique. Linguini London Pen. So this is it. It's this bit here. Oh, wait, you can't see it because I'm covering it. Um, let me have a look here. Can I zoom out a bit? Yeah. Um, so what you would do is you would do one lowercase Linguini, although it's capital L, Linguini, and then all uppercase and then lowercase again. Um, and I've just asked if I know about Pierogi. Uh, yeah, Scammer Payback, absolutely amazing channel. Love what Pierogi does. Really, really good guy. Um, so uh, David says, is it safe to allow your browser to remember passwords? It is not advised. I tend to not. If you're the only one in your house, maybe, but then I think that's even too risky. So say I'm going to say on here is I use a password manager, but I know that it's, you know, it's not necessarily cheap. Um, do people actually need a password to hack your account? Well, we're going to get onto that in a moment. These are really great questions, right? These are really great questions. Um, but yeah. Um, why is it important? Password passphrases become stronger with randomness. They are harder to brute force and become less susceptible to dictionary attacks. Many people consider passphrases to be stronger than passwords. This is due to their length and randomness. Most people agree that they are at least easier to remember whilst at the same time not compromising strength. The longer a password is, the better. But have I been pwned is great because you can check to see if your email address is in a data breach. So you type in, actually, I'm not going to type in my email now. Um, but uh, I mean, I'll do it while not on camera, my personal email address. Let's have a look here. Oh, no. And then it tells me here, I've just gone down. Oh, no, pwned. Pwned in four data breaches and found no pace. So. Uh. Here we go. It tells me the breaches I was a part of. So an online spam bot. My Fitness Pal, which I used ages ago. Canva. And Twitter in early 2023. So basically, it tells you what the compromising data is. Email addresses, names, social media profiles, and usernames. So I will put this link in the chat definitely check it out i mean i recommend some of you doing it now uh that is the url give it a go and you find and it doesn't look it's it's not to like alarm you it's educating you basically all it's saying is all these accounts if you've not updated them before this time just change it and then and then extra safe extra safe yeah and this is the thing is if they can act your personal yeah they can pretend to be you and things like that and that can be quite difficult uh so yeah really really good website so yeah have a have a go and let me know how you get on with it um so passphrases um but i also i personally use a password manager so one uh great site for it is called uh onepassword.com you've also got begins with our um can't remember what it was um but one password has have i been pwned ever been data breach we well, don't need an account to use it but you mean in terms of using your email address uh, i'd be curious actually um let's look at the pricing because i i use this what well, i don't even know what i pay so i i pay like about three three dollars a month but i do think there's a there's like a yearly amount maybe or something like that uh yeah oh that's when annual billing is selected so three dollars um you know 35 35 ish um dollars uh dollars a year and basically uh, it creates long passwords. You can have a, a Chrome or, you know, a, a browser thing, which means you don't have to keep going into it and copying and pasting it. 
Um, it's really easy to use and I can use it on my phone as well. And what it means is every single website you've got has a completely different, really long uh, password, which is a lot harder to break. And it means if someone susses one of your passwords, they haven't got it for everything. Because when you're always, you know, expect, you know, basing it on your own memory, you're using the same password for everything. And this means you can have really detailed passwords. So, um, yeah, it's um, it's really, really good. Uh, I don't know if it shows you. Yeah, so you can connect it. I've actually not used the website. And you can get, oh, you can get it for families, for five family members, for $5 a month. Um, so that's really, really good. Um, and again, you know, sometimes it's just having it written down, but, I th you know, some people have it in documents and stuff. But this is good. And and sometimes 1Password or these other ones, I think they do have data breaches as well. But, um, you know, again, there's nothing that's ever going to completely protect you. Um, oh, and this is this is a great tip from Cali, which is whenever you're doing uh, share, sharing screen caps, make sure anything in the top bar or bottom bar like browser add-ons aren't being shared. I mean, I was doing it just then there. But I actually use a separate browser for my live show. So these tabs here you see uh are um all to do with the show so you've got safer internet day the puzzle all getting on well there um and that's it but yeah you've always got to be mindful of that of like what you're showing on your screen and, it, and i've also got it selected that it's only sharing safari there's actually stuff around here like round here there is um where i'm showing now you can see it's gone to um it's changed to a um i don't know what that icon is but it means it's text because i'm actually looking at my notes um but you can't see it so yeah always got to be careful and there was actually one time where i did have something personal show on screen very quickly and youtube allows me to edit afterwards and blur it out um i think it was my email address when i was typing it in when logging into a certain game um and it's fine because you're all trustworthy in that but like you're out there on the internet you never know who's tuning in and you know just because they've got your email they can't do a lot with it but when there's a will there's a way so that is something right number four multi-factor verification so someone was asking earlier i think it was um time to play was saying um you know um what 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 i, I, I can't remember what it was actually what you said i want to find it exactly before i don't know if i can actually oh Go back to this. Uh, time to play. Let's have a look what you asked. You said something about passwords that was really good. Uh, I think, I'm pretty sure it was you. Yeah, you said, do people actually need a password to hack your account? So the next thing is uh, multi-factor verification. So the most common type of multi-factor authentication is two-step two verification. And you'll see this on a lot of social media websites where they say, we want you to have 2FA. And what that is, you have a password, but then they'll send you an email with a verification code. Or they will send you a text message or phone you up with a code. And that is to ensure it is you. If you, you know, so if someone hacks your account and gets your password, unless they've stolen your phone as well, they're not gonna be able to get in. So multi-factor allows you to do multiple things. I have it on my phone where it's face recognition. That's biometric data. You can do it with fingerprints. You can do it with lots of multiple things. Um, so yeah, it adds a step to your login process. Typically a code sent to your phone or generated by an app. You can get it with Google Authentica Authenticator, which is good, making it harder for unauthorized users to gain access. Uh, and most online services offer this. So um, yeah, if you ca whenever two-factor authentication is used, use it. And there's lots of things you can do. And actually, for your phone, the app that you can use is uh, it's called it's just called the Authenticator app from Google. And what the Google app does is every minute the code refreshes. It's a new code every minute. 
So when you log in, in, you just go to the Authenticator app and it will know exactly what code that of that minute is for your account. So that's really, really good. Uh, so that was number four. Number five, regular updates. This is a simple one, but a lot of these are helpful reminders. Software and app updates. Make sure you have the latest version of an app or piece of software on your computer. When they have updates, they often include patches for security vulnerabilities that have been discovered since the last update. So if you can, enable automatic updates where possible to ensure you're always protected. Number six, and this kind of go hand, goes hand in hand with number four, uh, oh, sorry, number five, um, and that is data backups. Just back up um, important files, you know, back up everything if you can um, to an external hard drive or cloud service to prevent loss from cyber attacks, theft or hardware damage. Um, this is something I need to be doing again. Um, you can get time machines for your computers, which I don't use. I manually do it. So time machines would be better. Um, but yeah, nothing worse than losing everything. It doesn't even have to be due to theft or anything. If your computer goes down, um, also if you're ever doing a, a, a system update, like an operation system update, always back everything. This this hasn't been updated yet because um, I need to make sure everything's backed up first because uh, when you lose everything, oh, your heart sinks. Your heart sinks. So number one, webcam hygiene. Number two, secure websites. Number three, strong passwords. Number four, multi-factor verification. Number five, regular updates. Number six, data backups. And number seven, email caution, okay? So phishing emails often disguise harmful links uh, as legitimate buttons or URLs. If you get an email and there is a like a text, you know, hyperlink, and you're not sure about it, it's not from someone you know, even there, you can do a check. You know, in your internet browser, you can have it that when you, um, I, I don't know what the term's called, but you can... Um, you can have a status bar at the bottom. So like when you, your your cursor goes over a link, it will show you the full link at the bottom. Just hover over the link in the email and see what the URL is at the bottom and see if it's recognizable. So that's one thing. Um, and if an email asks for sensitive information, verify its legitimacy by contacting the company directly through official channels. So I'll give you an example. If you get uh, a... a, a, a an Amazon email saying that there's been an issue with your delivery, click here to rectify it. And you've done the link check and you're like, I'm not sure this is an email. Uh, this is a legitimate email or just at all times. Don't click the links. Go to amazon.com or .co.uk yourself, log in and go check your order, like manually do it that way. Um, I once had a phone call from someone claiming to be from Virgin Media. I use Virgin Media. Uh, and they said that uh, they had some deals to offer me. And uh, I was like, oh, this is great. And they were like, um, this was a, quite a long conversation. And they said, before we proceed, we just need to do some security checks. Is that all right? And I was like, uh, okay. And they went, cool. Can we just have your, your name and first line of your address? And I went, can you prove that this is Virgin? And they said, well, obviously, we've got your account details here, but we need to do this security check. And I basically ended the phone call. They almost got me. They almost got me. So what I did was I phoned up Virgin myself and I said, hey. And they went, yep, yeah, that wasn't us. Thanks for letting us know. I obviously had the phone number. I could pass it on to him. So it's always like, you know, um, act on your terms. When an email comes to you asking you to do something, have autonomy. Don't just use what the email says. Go your own way. Go to the website. Check it yourself. And it's about using caution, you know, um, your own discretion. Sometimes you'll be like, no, this is fine. I've scrolled over it. I see the link is legit. But also look at the email. See what the email is as well. Um, Siago says that's a huge one. I'm always surprised... Um, by people who just give sensitive details to random people, actually companies very rarely, if ever, ask for you things like your bank details or sensitive info. So at work, and a lot of cybersecurity companies advocate this, is you have like a I will never list that your CEO has. 
So at our job, our CEO had a list saying, I will never ask for these things. Because I was one morning going to a, uh, a film shoot uh, for work and I had a text from an American number and I went, hey, hey, Miles, um, have you got a moment? It's Oz, Oz being my, uh, the CEO of my company. Now, the only time that I tend to hear from Oz was early morning whenever I was heading in for a, a video shoot. Um, and there's something called like authority bias, which is if your CEO is asking you to do something, you're going to be more willing to do it than if it was just another colleague. And so I went, oh, I'm on my way into London. Um, yeah, how can I help? He's like, I'm just going into a meeting, but we need uh, an Amazon, uh, we need an, uh, an Apple gift card for one of our clients. Um, can you can you can you get pick one up for me uh, and send me the details and, and then we'll sort it out later. And I was starting to think about it, and then I started replying, and I was I was thinking, yeah, yeah, I, but how can I do this? I'm not going to be able to do it in time. And then suddenly I was like, no, this is a scam. And so I ignored it. And then I did a whole write up internally at work saying this is what happened. And so although I'm quite savvy, the point is. We are all susceptible if there is the right, if there is the right mean. So uh, means. So you know, and and hyper personalization of attacks. You know, humans are the most common attack vector, and so you've got to be so so careful of that. And and Luke said this earlier, which exactly speaks to the point that I just made, which is. Um, beware when scammers urge you to act immediately with urgency, especially if they're like, need need this now. Urgency, um, authority, all these sort of things. And I heard a, a great interview on uh, uh, about someone who was like, they're, they, they'd been made redundant or they'd got let go from a job. They started a new job. It was their first week and they spent 50 to 100 pounds of their own money on an Amazon gift voucher from someone pretending to be the CEO. They never told the boss or anything because they were so embarrassed. But the reason they did it was because at the time they were like, the boss was asking me, um, I wasn't going to say no on the first week. And it was just really, really sad. And it, the thing is, like, that is a learning experience. But if everyone has to make that mistake, that's why the criminals are always going to thrive because there is so much money to be made if everyone just makes one mistake each. So it's why we have to think about it, yeah. Chris says, like I always say, all bosses are parasites. Oh my goodness. Um, lots of stories in the chat at the moment that I love. Um, I'm just racing for it because I'm mindful of time. Um, so yeah. Next one, uh, number eight, public Wi-Fi caution. Okay. Um, public Wi-Fi networks are not secure. Uh, there are other people on the same network as you and they could intercept your data. If you think about like you downloading an email on Wi-Fi, think about on London Underground or something like that or on a train, that is going through the, the Wi-Fi hub and into your computer or your phone, which means someone else could intercept it. Someone could be reading your emails or seeing you know, what information you're putting in logging into a website. Um, when you're using public Wi-Fi, you are basically naked. Um, and so um, don't use public Wi-Fi as much as possible. And I say this to myself, I often use it. Um, but if you do, use a VPN, something that is quite commonly heard of these days, which is a virtual private network. A VPN, there we go, Um Kira was just asking, is public Wi-Fi safer with a VPN? Yes, it is. Uh, because, and I had to look up a bit of an explanation for this, because I know what a VPN is, but I want to be absolutely clear with the terminology. Um, a VPN, a, a virtual private network, encrypts your internet connection, making it secure even on public networks. You can subscribe to a VPN service and install their app on your device. Um, I don't think this is necessary unless you do a lot of commuting perhaps, maybe you travel every day. But then as I said, if you buy something like, um, you know, um, YouTube Premium and download videos on your phone, then you're not having to use public Wi-Fi. Uh, Nord is one. Uh, I used to use something called Free Dome uh, and things like that. Um, so yeah, 
Uh, Chris says, yeah, I think I was hacked recently via public Wi-Fi recently. Um, so, yeah, always be mindful of that. I've got rid of my home phone after that all I got was scam calls. Yeah, I don't use a, 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 a landline either. Um, but, yeah, that's that's something to be mindful of. And a lot of them do have, like, good... Uh, they tell you all the stuff they've been able to intercept as well. So it's really, really important there. Cool. Um, cool. Number number nine. Number nine. Uh, social media settings. Just regularly check your privacy settings on social media, especially I remember Facebook was a really bad culprit of this. They do like these updates and then it would turn out they were making stuff public that you agreed to, but you just weren't checking it. So just regularly check your privacy settings to ensure you're only sharing information with people you trust. Um, be mindful of the personal details you share in your posts and profiles as they can be used against you. Um, we often broadcast a lot. I have like really old blogs online and that that I had to get taken down because it was me of a different time. Things I probably would have regretted saying now and things like that. Um, and Clem says rightly, you can't be too careful. But yeah, especially with social media sites. I mean, I used to be very open on social media, incredibly open about everything. Um, whereas now I'm definitely a lot more cognizant of stuff uh, and like, you know, which way the camera's facing and stuff like that. And I now treat every social media as a public like broadcaster. I, tr I, I, I think about it all, including, I, you know, if I want to have private conversations with friends, uh, I, I do it on like, Telegram, uh, is it tele Telegram or uh, Signal? Um, I use it in encrypted just for for security, um, and we're always guilted into not taking secure measures. This whole thing of if you've got nothing to hide, you've got nothing to worry about, and it's just like that's not that's not how freedom works. Because if it's the wrong government, wrong company, uh, wrong, wrong organization, uh, wrong perpetrator, um, you know, you wouldn't give anyone in the street your password because if you're like, I've got nothing to hide. Well, why don't you give your password to your emails? Oh, because they could impersonate you. Well, yeah, that's the whole point in privacy is that's you. It's who you are. And so that's really, really important. So, yeah, check in social media settings. And then number 10, and this is a general point, a good one to end on, is just be sceptical. Not paranoid, but be sceptical. Always question the legitimacy of unsolicited uh, emails, calls, or messages asking for personal information or money. As soon as someone asks for personal information or money, just ask yourself, did I instigate this, this conversation? And if not, can I speak to the company they're claiming to be directly on your own terms? As in, I'm going to end the call and say, even just saying, no, no, no thanks, um, I'm busy right now, I'll call you later. So if it's someone claiming to be Virgin Media or what, what have you, no, I, I, I'm busy right now, I'll call later. And that's it. As a general rule for me, if I get a phone call from any from a number that's not on my phone, I, I won't pick it up. If it's important, they'll leave a message or text or email, stuff like that. Um, because with AI, things are getting a lot more tricky. Getting a lot more tricky. Um, always question the le legit legit legitimacy of unsolicited emails. Yet. Yeah. Um, um, and then verify any suspicious offers by contacting the company through official means or by researching online for any reported scams. So you can find that all out as well. So, yeah. Um, Kira says, after some heated arguments on Instagram, I went through all my posts and re removed geographic markers. Never know how crazy people get. Yeah, I always do the location stuff on a case-by-case -case basis. I don't always do it generally. Um, but yeah, I'm always very cautious about anything that's an identifying factor. Um, just because, you know, the, the reality is if people wanted to find out where you live, they could find out, but it's about reducing the risk. It's about reducing the risk. Um, so yeah. All right, people. So I am just going to round this up. Uh, with the 10 tips to be safer, not safe, but safer online. Number one, webcam hygiene. Get a webcam cover. Make sure your camera is always pointing somewhere that doesn't have any personal information in the background or exposing other people that you live with. You know, as I said, if someone's walking out the shower uh, and it was looking at a door that was open in the morning, 
just got to be mindful of that. Number two, secure websites. Make sure websites have HTTPS for secure. Um, it's, it's, it's important. Uh, number three, strong passwords. Use passphrases. They're easier to remember and can be longer. Um, but also use a password manager if you can. Have a look at 1Password and all these other ones. Um, number four, uh, multi-factor verification. Always use 2FA if it's offered or more. Um, like, you know, we'll, we'll call you with a code and things like that. It just makes it safer. Um, it adds another point of complexity to anyone that wishes to hack. Number five, uh, regular updates. Always make sure apps and software is updated to the latest version. Uh, number six, uh, data backups. Always make sure all your stuff is backed up because if anything goes wrong, uh, then at least you still have it. Uh, number seven, email caution. Uh, whenever you get links sent to you, just roll your cursor over it and see what where the link is going to take you to. Uh, and if it's too suspicious, then go find it on your own mean. But any email that asks for sensitive information, verify its legitimacy by contacting the company directly. Uh, number eight, uh, public Wi-Fi caution. Don't use public Wi-Fi as much as you possible. And if you do, use a VPN. Lots of apps out there. Um, and they have free trials often that you can try. Uh, number nine, social media settings. Just check them because sometimes they change. Uh, and number 10, be skeptical. Uh, always question the legitimacy of unsolicited emails, calls or messages asking for personal information. Um, and if worst comes to worst, just say, hey, busy right now. I'll call you later and then call the company directly. So those are my 10 tips. Um, there's been some great discussion in the chat. Um, really, really appreciate it. But let's have this conversation continue. So if you have any stories, any comments, any questions or any tips of your own, do leave them in the comments section below. Um, I want to thank everyone for tuning in to Miles Dyer Live uh, this week. It's been a good one. Uh, really enjoyed this. Um, hope you learned at least something that will help you keep safer on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, <laughs> And number 11, don't use the internet and smash up all your electronic devices with a stick. There we go. There we go. You've heard it right here. Um, I've got to wrap things up now because I've got to get ready for a Let's Play in 50 minutes time. So if you're watching this live, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, it's going to be a really, really good one. I'm going to be joined by BJ, who is one of the devs for Legendary Tales. Such an awesome game. Uh, and uh, my friend Johnny is going to be joining me as well. So there's going to be three of us going on an adventure from the very beginning. And uh, for anyone that does have PSVR 2 and considering getting it, I'm just going to give some starter tips because there's a lot that you learn from this game as you go along. But uh, yeah, that's enough from me. Over to you for your final thoughts. Um, and just thank you so, so much. So love, respect, empathy, smash the like button. And adios, till next time. Bye-bye.
was chasing sunsets all alone. A darkness faded, painting the back in the sky. Far away, but dreaming of your ocean eyes. Here we are, people. Here we are. Uh, this is going to be in 50 minutes' time. It's called A Night. A Night to Remember. A Night to Remember. There we go. Um, so, uh, yeah, head on over. I'll put the link in the chat. Um, I'm just going to do some technical tests and also let the dev know what's going on um bless him the dev the dev didn't doesn't want the game being sport for anyone i think he thought i was going to be playing as my actual like big character which is way too far i was about to put the link in the wrong chat i was going to put the link in the live chat for that um head on over um and uh yeah this is going to be a night to remember uh this is going to be so so special i'm really really looking forward to it um so it comes out Haha, <laughs> you in armor, me in armor. I love that. I just, when I find these AI generations that I'm like, oh, I could use this one. This is the one I'm going to use. Uh, it's always, it's always good fun. So, uh, yeah, listen, everyone, I really enjoyed this show. Really good. Um, I ate way too much pizza. Um, but yeah, take good care of yourselves. And uh, I'm just feeling a lot better about the year. Um, it's just been a bit of a ditch. Um, and. Yeah, uh, I don't know what else to say other than I adore you all. Thank you, everyone. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you later. See you in 45 minutes. <laughs>